isn't the lighting so perfect i saw that it was a sunny day and i'm like i'm gonna take this opportunity to um take my lunch break and actually film this video and here's my puppy taro he's a tiny black haired chihuahua and he's gonna keep us company today <laughs> <laughs> he's so cute um today i'm talking about this book called interior chinatown by charles yu before i get started i just want to say someone left a comment on my video saying that my audio in the last couple were not good and i checked the footage the footage was fine it might have been that the software that i was using which is luma fusion um i think there was some issue in exporting but even then i have now got a microphone so hopefully this is going to be better so i do take your feedback and the second thing is i never usually say this but if you are new here apparently like 86 percent of my viewers are not subscribed so it'd be really great if you could subscribe yeah that's out of the way let's talk about the book i don't think i've been this excited to talk about a book since the beginning of the year which goes to say that this is possibly my favorite book that i've read so far this year and i totally did not expect it i knew very little about the author or you know the content of the book but anyways i'm so glad i picked it up because oh my god did this leave me floored i think i read it in like three days to be fair to the author it's like a really quick read the font the way it's written the spacing um there isn't a lot of it's not very text heavy that's what i'm trying to say but the pacing the way it's written it's so intelligently written the it like it's humorous but it has so much depth and perception and the way it's telling you the story like you can really tell that this guy has a lot of experience in storytelling and it's the kind of book that gave me a lot of perception and like how not unique my way of storytelling is i think i very much are you okay are you okay especially when i read these kind of books it inspires me so much to kind of just think out of the box a little bit and um, try new things so yeah it's very unique it, it is almost written in like a screenplay style and if i'm not wrong i think he writes for hbo i think he writes for a couple of different shows i'm not 100 percent uh, i didn't look into him that deeply but i did watch a couple of his interviews just after reading the book because i wanted to get a bit of context into like how he is and i must say like he sounds as intelligent in person speaking um as he does me reading this book if you are not someone who wants to jump into the book directly you want to basically understand i would really recommend watching a couple of his interviews or podcasts and then you can decide but i'll surely be picking up a couple more of his works after this so what is the book actually about i feel like i'm slightly intimidated to even talk about what the book is about because the best part about the book is just figuring out the way like the story introduces you to the character and who it is but in general it's about the background characters um asian american characters that you would usually see in movies of the 80s and 90s usually these would be like the delivery guy or the kung fu guy and the kung fu guy is considered to be the pinnacle of like where the american asian could be in terms of like the whole you know cinema world the uh, kind of you know tv world and i believe charles you i don't know where he started his career but now being in tv he obviously knows this world and it's interesting because i feel like so many elements of this story is told in the perception of a young man living in chinatown wanting to be a part of you know uh, a story where he is the central character and not just another generic asian man in a movie but at the same time i feel like it works so beautifully in telling the role that you know, or the role that Chinese people don't play in the history of America and the story of America. So in one scenario, you have this man really hoping that he one day will be the star of his own story and he will have a chance to say his own story and um, share it with the world. Whereas on the, in the parallel, you he kind of shares these little snippets of Asian American history, the laws that were passed over the last 200 years or so, and where that has left Asian American in the context of American history. So basically saying that they don't really have a place in the story of America. And as much as you know, they struggle to find a story in the um, in a cinema world, they don't even have a story in the real world. So this whole historical context and the real world, when they merge, it creates this like real disassociation for people who live in America. And like, who if I've been here and my family has been here for 200 years, why do I still feel like I'm not a part of the American story? So I think 
being like first generation immigrant myself i do struggle sometimes in trying to explain to people that you know when you grow up in a country and you live there and everyone around you is from the same country you don't constantly think i'm indian and i need to behave indian and i need to do things that are indian and blah 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 but again and again people can make you feel like because you are not in your own country and you are in a, another country you have to perform being what you already are like i don't think about being an indian or being from india unless someone brings it up because when you are in a country surrounded by indians nobody really talks like that but somehow when you're living in another country you have to perform that part i mean i personally don't because i don't hang out with people who make race or uh, origin country whatever all of these things a big part most of my friends are from countries around the world where i have a very international um i would say close circle of friends never comes up but i can see how this is an issue where people almost expect you to play a part when you are from a certain place in the world i've met people here who have grown up um like second third generation asian and they don't necessarily think that chinese food is their favorite food or that they need to have the best recommendations for chinese food doesn't mean that they're not you know a big fan of their own culture had they been in china you know french food could have been their favorite food just because you're from a particular country doesn't mean you have to be a walking billboard for that country you're presenting and behaving a certain way and i guess to a certain degree that's not a bad thing as long as you know you're proud and you want to show it and you do it out of your own will it's sad when people expect you to perform a particular part for example if you look chinese why don't you have an accent if you look indian why don't you have an accent and when you have those accents suddenly you become like you know oh do people understand like oh now you make sense whereas looking that way and speaking that way together does not make sense and i think this dissociation is such an issue for people who are growing up in today's generation who are maybe second or third generation in this country and for them it's like what do you want me to do i grew up here i uh, i i mean i associate and i probably i connect with this culture more than i do with my own but you want me to perform my own culture day in and day out which is not really something that people should expect out of other people so this is the story about these background asian people that you know in movies you don't really get to learn anything about them because they're always in the background but suddenly in this story they're at the forefront and you're learning about their life in chinatown you they live in this sro on top of a chinese restaurant and most of the people work in that chinese restaurant and it takes you to this like micro uh cosm of like this life that people have built this you know politically imposed um part of town that you know they have to live in and they have to try and survive and what life is like in that and sometimes in the story you kind of get confused whether or not you are reading a play or if this is real life the reason for that is he introduces the writer introduces this play called black and white that takes place um in the central kind of chinatown in the restaurant and it kind of sounds like this play is something that gets performed every night and people come and they watch it you know take place while they're eating and stuff but at the same time certain parts make you feel like they're actually talking about real life it's kind of like a detective show and sometimes you're like wait did someone actually die no this is a play and they talk about how like the generic asian man dies every time and then you have like 48 days or so that you are not allowed to be a part of anything till everyone forgets and you can just come back and continue being another generic asian character in the play so again because there is such a close link between what is actually happening and the metaphors that are introduced in in the storytelling it's really hard to tell which one is what but not in a kind of disengaging way i think it actually adds so much character and depth to the story and i think black and white is also an interesting play on words because towards the end of the story you get an understanding of like obviously black history is really really important and that has a very you know like it has a place in american history in itself and there's so much discourse over the last you know 5 6 years or so rightfully so that are giving people a space and you know a platform to say their story and talk about things but that does not mean that america is just black and white there's also space for other cultures and being maybe indian like i again I, like i said i am surrounded by so many international people that i don't particularly feel that i'm in a country where people only see black and white and no brown yellow but where does the rest of us come within that and i think that's quite an interesting 
um, take that I found in this book that I didn't maybe find in other books that I've read. And a part of me felt like after I finished reading this book that I got out of this book what I thought I would get from watching everything everywhere all at once. And I know that a lot of people love that movie, so I don't want to, you know, say that like it was terrible or anything, but I personally felt like it was interesting but I like I didn't have the same response as a lot of other people had and I kind of felt like the storytelling there I'm, I'm a sto sucker for stories as you can tell by this channel and this me sitting here and talking about this I love a good story that's what drives me in life like I have plenty of passions but I love love good stories and to me um, that movie had everything but like the story to me felt a bit cliche okay I'm sorry that's what it is because maybe I am someone who's exposed to a lot of um, Asian literature and you know I've read stories that are a lot more deeper but that doesn't go to say that the movie's bad I think the movie's still really good but this was on another level that I felt like I got so much out of it and so much more context that I really wished was um, more prevalent in everything everywhere all at once so if you liked that i think this you will really really love and it's not something that i would kind of gatekeep and say this is only interesting for people who are asian american or immigrants or blah blah i think this is an interesting story for absolutely anyone to read it's also very hilarious there's so much humor in this that it becomes quite easy to go through even if there's so much kind of packed in there the last part that i really loved about the movie is this internalized idea of you know what people should be um, and how much of an issue that can be so I think being the kung fu guy is such a like you know thing that it like society tells you like that's where you can get to that's the best you can do in life and the main character Willis he very much internalizes this concept of like that's the pinnacle of my story and if I don't achieve that then my life would not amount to anything but then very when he was really young his mom says like okay but you know i want you to be more i want you to be more than kung fu guy and at that point he didn't really understand what that meant but as he goes through life and he is close to achieving what he believes is like the most the the peak of his life and something that'll bring him just you know endless contentment he begins to realize that you know i don't know why i wanted to be kung fu guy is this something that i wanted or is this something that i was made to want or made to desire and it almost becomes like are we taught to reach a certain um standard in life whether it to whether that's in the corporate world or whether that's in any aspect of our lives just because that's what was fulfilling to a certain generation or a certain group of people because i think especially you know if you think about their parents migrating obviously my parents didn't migrate here um the first one to move to this country but if i think about like you know had i moved here in the 70s or 80s my experience as an immigrant would have been completely different i'm not living my life completely oblivious to all of those things i'm very hyper aware that a lot of the perks of life that i enjoy today and a lot of the freedom that i enjoy today is because a lot of people have fought for those things in the past so getting to know the story from someone's perspective of like yes people tell you that you should be settled and you have stability and that's what you should always achieve and you know aim for and suddenly you are like actually i want something completely different and that's okay because stability is something that you're taught to strive for especially when you are a minority and you have everything sought out against you um, and then you suddenly learn to kind of look past that and be like you know what if i want to be more and i think that's a very valid question to ask no matter who you are and what culture you belong to so i hope that was a good overview of the book i did not give you any spoilers so absolutely please go and pick up the book because i think you're gonna love it and if you do let me know so yeah that's interior chinatown i will be back with more book reviews soon but take care see you soon bye